Are you a high performing real estate investor who's looking to further elevate your performance? If so, download our free guide, Raising the Bar, Five Steps to Elevate Your Habits by joining our insider network at elevatepod.com. This guide created by yours truly has the power to put your transformation on autopilot and exponentially change your trajectory. Go get your free copy now at elevatepod.com. Welcome to Elevate, the masterclass where we dissect the elements of exceptional achievement and lifestyle design with a focus on personal growth and real estate investing. Now, here's your host, Tyler Chesser. Elevate Nation, welcome back. This is Tyler Chesser. I'm so thankful to have you here. And I am blessed and grateful to be sitting with Brian Driscoll today. Brian is a phenomenal SEO, digital marketer, and someone who is obviously a real estate investor himself, but he helps many real estate investors across the country create more motivated lead through digital marketing, through SEO, and through this beautiful thing that we all know as an algorithm, right? Because it surrounds us at all times. So how are you applying to the algorithm yourself? How are you effectively making investments to continue to grow your business and to continue to build this beautiful vehicle that we have and to create more outcomes that you want in your life and to create more abundance that you want in your life. And in this episode, you're going to learn all of what I just said. You're going to learn some advanced marketing tactics. You're going to learn how to make specific investments and what type of investments you can make or need to make to grow your business, to create motivated leads rather than just leads. Elevate podcast is all about mindset, mind expansion, and personal development for high performing real estate investors. Today's no different. And it is a masterclass and you're going to learn so much today. And I think you're going to get a lot out of today's episode. I am your host, Tyler Chesser, and I'm a professional real estate investor and high performance coach. It is my job to decode the stories, habits, and multifaceted expertise of world-class investors and other experts to help you elevate your performance and lifestyle. Are you ready to take it to another level? It is time. Let's raise the bar. Before we dive into this episode, I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for being a part of Elevate Nation. We are stronger and better together. I'm so grateful for you. I'm I'm so grateful for everyone who listens to this podcast. If you're enjoying the podcast, don't forget to give us a rating, a review, and follow the podcast and wherever it is that you listen or watch podcasts, because we're going to continue to bring the heat. By the way, we've got some amazing news. We've got some amazing things going on in my personal life. And otherwise, uh, wow, a lot of cool stuff I will be sharing with you very, very soon. So I'm just going to plant that beautiful seed and I also Brian actually plants another beautiful seed in this episode. So we've got some cool things going on and, and I hope that you do too. I hope you, you are enjoying your day. I hope you're having a phenomenal day and I hope you're ready to learn because today's episode is phenomenal. Without further ado, I want to introduce today's guest, Brian Driscoll, who is a real estate investor, a digital marketing and SEO expert and the co-founder of Motivated Leads a digital marketing agency that helps investors expand their real estate portfolios quickly by generating quality motivated seller leads. Brian has over a decade of experience doing SEO for both large and small companies, but after investing some of his agency profits into rental properties, he and his business partner realized that true wealth comes from real estate investing. Now, in addition to investing in real estate, Brian uses his expertise to help other investors find quality leads. So without further ado, please welcome to the show, Brian Driscoll. Brian Driscoll, how are you? Hey, what's up, man? How you doing? I'm fantastic. I'm excited. Uh, man, I, you know, I think that your story, your background, your expertise is very valuable. Um, but man, I just appreciate being here with you. I appreciate being a part of this discussion with you. But um, let's dive into this discussion, man. Let's dive into this podcast because one of the things that I want to do, first of all, is I want to know more about you. I want to know more about what would the people closest to you, what would they say about you? I mean, whether it's your kids, your wife, your family members, the people who know you best, what would they say about Brian Driscoll? They say, they say I have issues. <laughs> they, they would say, um, I know, I know a couple of guys that know me in business. They just say I'm a machine. They're like, they're like, how do you do this, this, this much stuff? They're like, how do you keep track of it all? Um, and just a driver, like I'm so freaking focused on doing stuff and I don't know what it is. I just like, um, I'm excited about it. I wake up every day at like four in the morning. I work like 14 hours. I hang with the family for dinner time and then I work a little bit more. You know, so I'm constantly hustling. So yeah, even my business partner is like, dude, and he's a really high performing guy. He's like, I don't know how you do all this stuff. He's like, I need some of that crack. <laughs> Where does that come from, man? I don't know. It comes from my gut. 
like, so, so I guess it kind of goes in phases. So if I'm doing something I'm not excited about, like back in the day, if I was working at a job that I didn't really like, it's like, I got to set an alarm clock in the morning, go to work, uh, things like that. And I didn't have it. I, I'm just looking to get out to be done at five or to go out on a weekend, go drinking or whatever. But once I started focusing on things that I like and having real goals, it's not necessarily what I'm doing. Uh, but it's like the, 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 I guess you call it the passion, stuff like that. It just keeps me going. It's just like, I really enjoy it. It's like a game almost, you know, and, and it might, the cash you make is just like determining, okay, success or not. Like it's like the scorecard. Yeah, I can, I can relate to that. And, and when you said it's almost in your gut, it's like, it's like this fire from within that you'll never quench or you'll never put out or something. I don't know if that resonates with you, but yeah. that's how I feel. It's like every day, it's like, you know, there's certainly days where you just don't feel like it and things like that. But for the most part, I kind of share that with you where it's like, man, I'm so driven because I'm so clear about where I'm going. I'm so passionate about what I'm doing. I love what I'm doing. And, and now there's times where I'm like, man, this sucks. I hate this. You know, I, yeah. I, I have to admit that. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of like you where it's like the, that fire in the belly. Is that resonate with you? Yeah, hundred percent. And, um, one of my buddies told me too, he's like, he's like, he's a really smart guy, like a PhD guy. He's like, um, he's like sharks can't stop. Like when they're swimming, I mm. guess, which I, I'm guessing it's true, but <laughs> and I kind of have the same type of thing. Like if I, um, like going through ups and downs. Like I've been depressed before. It, it sucks, you know? And so what I've always found too, is it's like, if I ever complete a goal and I don't have something else lined up there, that goes away. So I constantly keep things. I, I have like a year's worth of stuff planned out. So that, so I'm always ex- and it's stuff that I choose. So I'm always excited about it, but yeah, it, it's like right in the gut. So tell me a little bit about your upbringing and sort of your backstory. I mean, where'd you come from? What was life like growing up and so forth? Yeah, sure. So I grew up in Pittsburgh. It's actually a suburb in Bethel Park. Um, went to the public schools. Parents are still married to today. I got a brother and sister. I'm the oldest. I went through the public schools and then I got into some trouble in high school. So they switched me over to a, a private school, which is probably a blessing in disguise. Because I look back at some of the guys that I was hanging with. And then, yeah, I, did, I got in a lot of trouble in my 20s, just doing all kinds of stuff. I don't know why. And then um, one day it just clicked and I, started, I focused and uh yeah, it's, it's pretty much upbringing there. So what do you mean something clicked? What what happened? Like I used to drink a lot, like like in my 20s. I, I made a lot of money. So I, I my upbringing, I, I used to work a bunch of different jobs. I get bored a lot. So I would like work pizza delivery or work at Best Buy or I'd uh, be at TGI Fridays doing, being a waiter. And then um, I got a job at Comcast in a repair department. It's like 12 bucks an hour or something. <clears throat> and then three months later, I was in sales. I'm 19 years old, point uh, over 100 grand a year which is a lot of money back then. So, so I decided, okay, we're, I'm paying for limos, drinking and got, got involved in a party scene, which is horrible. Like it, drinking's bad. <laughs> so, but, but like I got in a lot of trouble doing, doing uh drinking stuff like that. And eventually I, I, something just clicked. I don't know what it is, but I, I started to focus on positive things versus uh, going out and partying, going out and, and focusing on the short-term things. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. So what was the shift? I mean, was it someone that you spent time with that kind of helped you open your eyes or did you just wake up one day really hung over and you're like, man, I'm making a horrible, so a lot of horrible decisions. Let's just make a shift or what happened? What was the, what was the uh, fork in the road there? <laughs> yeah. Fork in the road. I usually don't talk about this too much, but I got, I got in big trouble. We used to go out shooting streetlights at night with, with a pistol or something drinking. So, and we, I got arrested. So, and uh, one of my friends actually overdosed on pills when I was in a car with them. So um, that shocked me. It's like, I had about four or five years after that of uh, like depression, different things like that. And eventually I just came out of it, you know, and then said, Hey, I got to do totally different stuff here. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's, it's um, I'm sure many of the listeners can resonate with that and understand that sometimes to make a change, we kind of have to hit rock bottom. And so in some way, right. So that can be a blessing in disguise for us to say, all right, well, there's nowhere else to go, but up. So let's make right. a change. And then, then you made that decision, right. And you made the decision to focus on positive things. So when you say you were focusing then on positive things, like what did that look like? What did that transformation look like? So, so I, like I do, I, I read a lot of books now. My dad always, I was always in a car with him when I was a kid. He's always reading like Zig Ziglar on a, on a cassette, stuff like that. That's awesome. I was always in the background. So I started like reading, think and grow rich was one of the first ones I, I, I read. And I'm like, okay, if you think it, you can believe it. So I started thinking about better things like, Hey, where do you want to be in five years? Think about that stuff, kind of visualize it and reading different books. And then also looking at money too. It's like, okay, you can go out and spend this money on 
I don't know, say, for example, we paid for a limit. That money's gone tomorrow right. and, it, and it's wasted versus you can take cash or just anything like that. And you can actually have it working for you. So you can kind of build it and then you don't have to do the effort. You have to earn it the first time, but then you can have it multiply for you without you sweating for it. No, I love it. I think it's like the first place to start is you've got to invest in your mind, right? You've got to learn, you've got to gain perspective on what's possible. And I love that you started with thinking grow rich. You started to realize, wow, there's so much abundance out there. And instead of, you know, necessarily earning every dollar, I can allow money to work for me. You started to have a shift in your mindset in terms of your outlook, not only on how you were spending your time, who you're surrounding yourself with information that you're putting in your mind, but also how your activity was then shifting. Am I saying this correctly? Yeah, hundred percent. You know what? That's a good thing you brought up too. Like who you surround yourself with is huge. Like if I surround myself with people not doing cool stuff, you're going to do that stuff. And you're going to get down to those levels versus like, I like to hang around with people now that are like way smarter than me, way more successful. Um, just because you're going to turn into who you hang around with. It's so know? true, man. I was on a, a, a mastermind trip last month in Costa Rica with our, our masterminds called the quantum mastermind. And I could fe- literally feel myself, you know, my, like my internal dial just turned all the way up. And it was like, it was a little bit uncomfortable in that moment because I'm around these super high performing individuals. I'm like, man, I got to step my game up. I got to step my game up. And some of it's subconscious, some of it's conscious, but you can feel that. And you start to act different. You start to talk different. You start to ask different questions. You start to seek different information. You start to just behave differently. And then you can feel it the opposite way as well. When you surround yourself with people who are not on that wavelength, you can feel yourself correcting to that as well. One of the things that I've, I'm really passionate about neuroscience and what I've understood understood about it is it's mirror neurons, right? Our, our brain is literally wanting to mirror what's in our environment because that's how we've evolved over millions of years. And to me, it's really interesting because if you, if you want to hack your system, it's just surround yourself with amazing people, people that are doing right. bigger things or things that are doing people that are doing things that you want to do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. So, and especially when you hang around those people too, they want to help you. Right. Like, exactly. Like people that are above you, they all want to help you in, in that mm-hmm. kind of circle versus people doing other stuff, they want to bring you down be like, oh, no, that's not going to work. And if you start succeeding, they want to pull you back down, make yes. you feel bad, all that kind of stuff. So when did you get into um, SEO, digital marketing and all that stuff? I mean, when did you start to become fascinated with that and start to work in that environment? Yeah, I got, I got into SEO back in like um, probably the early 2000s. I was okay. sitting with one of my buddies. Uh, he sold, he had a website, he sold multi-tool blades. He was actually selling them on eBay. They're like an oscillating tool blade. I don't know if you know what that is. I think so. so. Yes. Yeah, so he was just selling them on eBay. It's like, it's like a, kind of like a sawzall type of tool. Okay. And he was selling them like, hey, dude, let's stick a website up and see what we can do. So we stuck up a basic WordPress. Uh, for anyone who knows, back in the day, you stuck up a WordPress website. It was just like that white template. <laughs> and then you could uh, put WooCommerce in it and uh, start something. So we started doing that. And I, I started, I was helping him because I had a little bit of background. I always poked around with that. I had a friend who owned an agency. And he started making sales and he told me, he's like, dude, you need to do this for other people. He's like, you actually put me into business, which we were just tinkering around, but it actually did create a business because now he's not selling on eBay. He has a website, he's building a list. And that's what got me into it. And then I jumped onto a website called Upwork. It was at Odesk back then and um, started getting jobs for like 20 bucks an hour. And that's how I got into it and been doing it ever since. So you literally just jumped in and just, you're like, oh, I can, I can build you a website. And then all of a sudden you learned that your approach was impactful is effective. So then you said, all right, well, let's keep going. Right. And, and right. so then you started working as a freelancer for others. Kind of everything's right. Except for I didn't just jump in. I, I hung around like websites, okay. like the warrior forum. I don't know if you've ever been on there. No, like they're old website forums talking about like uh, setting up websites. So I did a lot of fam. Like I stick up websites. They don't work. Uh, <laughs> and then eventually, eventually it worked. And then I, then I ran with it, but yeah, it probably took me like three years to figure out So that website that you just mentioned, was that like a forum where you can learn from others who know what they're doing? And it's not like formal education, but you're surrounding yourself with other people who are sharing best practices and such. Yeah. Kind of like best practices. It's it's probably still around. It's warriorforum.com. I think it's like a forum with a lot of affiliate people on there and just people talking about different things with internet marketing. You kind of grab the tips of anything that's good and you got to look because there's a lot of rip off stuff in there too. You know what it, it makes me think of is it's personal development. At the end of the day, yeah. if you want to learn something in today's day and age, every piece of information is at your fingertips. It's right. not about information. It's about application, of course. But the beautiful thing about the abundance of 2021, 2022 and beyond is we have every piece of information. Now, 
it's not about having more information. Of course, it's about application. It's about strategy. It's about insight and so forth. But that's a beautiful thing because when you're getting started, it's like, let's get the baseline. You don't necessarily have to go to Yale to then, right. you know, do whatever it is that you want to do, but you can go out there and find this information. It's about how committed are you to this? So talk to me, you know, obviously you've continued to grow as a digital marketer. You've, you've serviced so many different um, industries, so many different professionals, you know, talk to me, why is digital marketing and SEO still so relevant? I mean, you started, you know, back over 10 years ago and it's still continually more relevant. Obviously it continues to evolve. I actually previous in a previous life before being a real estate investor was in digital marketing as well for a, for a large corporation. So I can really appreciate it. And I can also really appreciate how much it's evolved. So why is it still so relevant and what are you seeing in terms of its continued evolution right now? Yeah, sure. So, so it's the way the world's moving. Everything's going. Everything's going tech. Facebook, Google, pay per click, all that kind of stuff. Um, hmm. So, so the number one reason you need to be involved with real estate and then the digital side is because you can get in front of so many people for the same dollar that you can for mailers or different things like that. So it's it's a lot cheaper if you if you can understand how to set it up right, um, target the right audiences. So like when you're marketing, a lot of people just stick stuff up. They're like, hey, I'm just going to show ads to the entire world. And, and the people that want my stuff are going to come. And it, there's a lot of research behind you. You have to understand like, who's your audience? Um, what what they want to see, what they relate to, all that kind of stuff. And then you like, I've done mailers and stuff for uh, houses. They Everything's going to work. Like you can do mailers. That's going to work if you do it consistently. Do Facebook, Google, pay-per-click. They'll all work if you do them consistently. It's just some are going to get you a better return on investment, you know? Yeah. And that really resonates with me too, thinking about targeting the right audience because the internet is a big place. And yeah. if you're just targeting everyone, then you're really not going to reach anyone. So I think that's, that resonates really deeply. And you think about people that are listening who are real estate investors are thinking, all right, well, I want to create more deal flow, right? I want to, what, what, whatever asset class you invest in, deal flow is important for your continued growth. Uh, whether you invest obviously in single family homes, whether you invest in apartment complexes, commercial real estate, self-storage, land, whatever, you need to create deal flow. And so obviously each of those different target audiences are unique, right? So could right. you talk a little bit about the, maybe some best practices or tips that you might have for folks as they're considering, all right, well, that makes sense. The internet's a big place. How do I get clear on my target audience? Like when I'm targeting demographics on Facebook or Google, whether it's pay-per-click or whatever, how do I get clear on my audience? And, you know, because I want to spend my dollars, you know, in a, in a, in an effective and impactful way. So is there anything that you would say to that, Brian? Yeah, so I would. So, so number one is you got to look at if you're in business already and you have clients, look at who your top clients are and, and look at, okay, the male, female, what do they do? What are they interested in? Things like that. Uh, we'll talk about real estate, for example. Uh, we can't, like a motivated seller, like someone that's looking to sell a distressed property, like the types that most investors buy, it's hard to target them because it's not like someone likes to watch Oprah and that's an interest that shows that they just had a hardship. Like they, 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 they could have just lost their job or COVID could have just hit. So you can't really target them as much on interest. But the thing you can do is make sure your ads are super direct. So if you're targeting people that want to sell their house, you say, sell your house fast. Uh, we're cash home buyers. We buy houses. We pay cash. We pay fast. Be extremely direct with your messaging. And then you'll hit the right types of people. And they'll, they'll know what they're getting into when they click the ad. Direct them to a website that also states that, and it all makes sense. Don't try to trick them. Like a lot of people looking for real estate leads, they'll say, um, hey, we're going to do uh, ads saying we'll give you a home valuation or tell you how much your house is worth. That's fine. You're going to get thousands of leads for like five bucks a piece, but it's not going to turn into anything. You're going to be a telemarketer and the people just want, want to know how much their house is worth versus if you're really direct, they want to sell their house, you know, if that makes sense. It makes sense. I mean, you think about a lot of people are looking to, well, and I guess it goes back to the difference in goals, right? If your goal is literally, you know, direct, uh, you know, conversion to a sale or to a purchase or what have you, you need to right. be very direct on, Hey, here's exactly what we're looking to do. So if you're looking to sell, you know, click here and, you know, give us a call or whatever, or set up a time to discuss with us or, you know, take our offer right now. Right. Um, you know, but you have a lot of people who are trying to build their email list or they're looking to brand, but that's really a def different strategy. Am I saying this correctly, Brian? Totally different strategy. So say you're looking to build an email list, like you got to think, okay, think of the buyer's journey. So say you're selling a product, for example, 
and, and you're trying to build a list. You, you could you could do a campaign like a funnel. So you could technically make a, make a funnel, an informational video or something that you can build an audience based on how much of the video people watched. Then you can show them additional ads based on their behavior. Or say, for example, if it's an e-commerce, uh, someone goes through it, they add something to cart and they don't purchase, you can create a pixel event that you can show a 10% off promo code to the people that didn't purchase. So you can do things like that. And then on email lists, you just got to, you've really got to know your audience and give them something of value and make sure you're not giving crappy stuff away either just to get their email, like give them something that's really good, like a book that you've actually written, not just like a one page piece of junk. It, cause you, cause it's kind of like a bait and switch there, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. So let's talk about this because, you know, it seems to be very relevant for people who are investing in single family homes to be able to use pay-per-click, whether it's on Facebook or Google or what have you, and generate significant leads. And obviously I know that that's what you guys do in, in many capacities. I'm curious, I mean, are you seeing any success for folks who are investing in call it larger multifamily properties, um, commercial real estate, land, what have you? Are you seeing success on those side of, you know, that side of the fence as well in real estate? Yeah, I actually am. It's funny you bring that up too. I was just doing a test in Pittsburgh on land and yeah, we were getting leads. It's crazy too. I'm like, I can't believe these people are actually reaching out like 250 acres, stuff like that, like, like big properties. Um, so we do same with commercial. So one thing when you're marketing for real estate or anything, uh, it depends on your demographics and where you're where you're marketing to. So if, you, if you're just trying to market, like I'm in Pittsburgh, if I'm just showing ads in Pittsburgh, my cost will be more expensive than if I'm marketing to the entire state. Or my cost marketing to the state will be more expensive than if I'm marketing to the entire country. But we have we have a someone is doing commercial, and as long as your ad like your messaging has to be there. So if you're looking to buy commercial properties, have commercial buildings in your ads. We buy commercial properties. Uh, we buy warehouses. Like if you can even break it down into the specific type, like we buy office buildings, we buy warehouses, stuff like that. Or we buy multifamilies and have a four unit building on there if that's what you're looking for. But if you're looking for a twenty unit building have that in there, you know? And yeah. And I think it's important for folks to understand sort of, you know, just behavior of people that are either selling or looking to sell properties, or maybe it's even brokers. I mean, who is it that you're trying to reach, right? And having an understanding of their behavior. Talk to me about the difference between lead gen and motivated lead gen, uh, lead generation. Okay. What's the difference there? So there, there's a big difference. So so say you do lead gen, I can generate leads on Facebook, something called a lead form would be one example. Someone clicks an ad, they see a picture of your house, Facebook automatically fills in their information based on their info that they have on you, done. Person never saw your website or anything, you just got a lead, cost you 10 bucks. Versus you can show the same type of ad, they click it, it's direct, it takes you to a website that explains that you're a cash home buyer, uh, you buy properties, you can make it convenient, you're not paying top dollar. They, they read that. Then they still fill out a form. We ask them for like name, phone number, email address. Once they do that, we ask them more questions like how fast do you want to sell? How much works your property need? Um, why do you want to sell? Confirm it's not listed on the market. Once someone does all those steps, I consider them motivated because they went through the process. They didn't drop off and they filled out a whole bunch of questions for us. So there, there's a higher likelihood that they want to sell their property and they're the right person because if like if they're property was listed on the MLS, they would have dropped off because it, it's one of the questions, you know? Yeah. So, look, so the difference is you've been very direct about what you're looking to accomplish. They're very clear on what it is, you know, you're looking to collect information from them for. Right. And once they go through a few steps, you kind of put a little bit of hurdles there in place for them. So they've got to give you multiple types of information. At that point, you know that they've kind of worked hard. They're clear exactly on what it is that you're looking to accomplish. And then you know that you've got someone that's very hot on the on the lead track. Is that am I understanding yeah. that correctly? Yeah, hundred percent. And it could be a total different on cost per lead. That lead's going to cost might cost one hundred fifty dollars versus the lead form cost ten. So talk to me about numbers because um, you, you mentioned cost a few times. I mean, what are what are costs looking like these days? I mean, whether you're doing pay per click on Facebook or Google, I mean, talk to me about that. I mean, what what, what yeah. should people expect? You're mentioning also the different geographical areas and and you know segmenting and all this different things. So give us a sense of what people should expect when they're thinking about budgeting if they're going to make an investment in this direction, what should they be planning on doing? Yeah. So that's a good question. So we'll talk about Facebook first. So there, there's two difference on marketing. So you have Facebook, you're bidding on impressions, Google pay-per-click, we're bidding on keywords. So Google pay-per-click, we're in direct competition with other investors. We're bidding on keywords like 
sell my house fast, sell my house for cash, stuff like that. Facebook, we're bidding, we want to have our ad show in a specific area. So we're bidding against the bakery and the shoe store down the street. So we can get a lot more reach on Facebook. So coming down to number zone and uh, areas, if you're in Pittsburgh, I can get a lead for like 60 bucks on Facebook. If you're in San Diego, you're probably looking 350 bucks. But also the difference is here in Pittsburgh, I'm picking up properties for like a hundred grand versus San Diego. They're way more expensive with way bigger margins. Um, so that, so that's one thing. Then on the Google pay-per-click side, it, that's insane right now in this market. Uh, I'm seeing costs double every single month. Some people are paying $50, $60 per click. Yeah, so it's super important to um, make sure your campaign's really optimized so you don't have waste because one click, 50 bucks, you can go broke really fast. Uh, so Google pay-per-click, I see on average, like a cost per lead on Google might be three times what it costs to get them on Facebook. But also clicks coming from Google have very high intent like I just searched, need to sell my house fast. They came to our website. If they don't fill out a form, I'll retarget them on Facebook. So we're kind of filling that funnel and building the audience. And then we can scoop up the lead there. So kind of Google pay-per-click's more expensive, but a lot of it is funneling Facebook, which doesn't really translate back in terms of numbers. Is that because you have a pixel on your website, which then allows you to retarget them? Yeah, hundred okay. percent. Yep. Got it. So in terms of overall budget, I mean, is there any rules of thumb that you would suggest for investors to say, all right, well, I'm looking to continue to grow my business. I want to grow my, my deal flow, my, my leads, um, you know, for new deals. Is there sort of a, you know, an allocation that, that makes sense for you, or you've seen work for some of your, you know, top clients uh, yeah. in terms of a percentage or, you know, investment that they're going to make in SEO or uh, pay for click or, 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 you know, at digital marketing and so forth. Yeah. So on the paid channels like Facebook, I'd say, if you're going to start that, uh, depending on your market, I'd, I'd put a minimum of 1500 ad spend per month. Say you're in San Diego or one of the really competitive mm -hmm. places, I'd probably double it. But 1500 is a good ind indicator just because then you can run ads and see which ones are working, which ones aren't. Once you get, once you get dialed in, then you can scale it up. Um, so, but anything less than that, take a while. Got it. So do you recommend kind of split test A, B, split testing just to kind of see which sort of ad is more, more relevant or impactful? hundred percent. So normally we'll run campaigns with like three or four ads in them. And mm. a lot of times we'll break that into different ad sets too, that we can target uh, in different interests. And then we're going to be testing, okay, this ad's working, this ad's not. Uh, Cause the difference of a winning ad, like I do a lot of testing national just to see what works. And uh, I had one ad, they had the same words, same text in them. One of them was $55 cost per lead and the other was 15. If you figure you spend $10,000 or whatever it is, like a big number, that's a big time difference in the leads. So you always have to be testing different things there. Yeah. If you're going to make that type of investment, you know, you want to see a return on investment, right? I mean, right. especially if you're going to be spending $10,000. So talk to me about what type of return on investments are you seeing? I mean, whether it's within your own business or with within your clients, I mean, what type of return on investment makes that type of ad spend worthwhile? Yeah. So it depends what you're doing. So you got wholesaling, you got flipping, and then you got the buy and hold guys, right? Yep. Wholesalers on average probably make like 10K per deal, maybe a little bit more in this market. Flippers are probably making like 20 to 100. And then you got the buy and hold. Uh, I'll give you an example. Just one of my recent deal. I picked up a property for 120 grand. I put in 20,000 into it. So I got 140 in it just to praise for 230. So it's like 70K profit. So it makes it worth it. I buy and hold. So I never see the cash. Like I leave the equity in there. But you figure you're turning, I say you haven't spent five grand to get the deal into 70. It, it makes sense. Just you have to do it consistently. Like it's not like you stick Facebook ads up and then tomorrow you're getting deals. Yeah. You know? I love how you, um, you got started in this business, you know, obviously digital marketing, SEO and doing that for other people and also creating leads. And you're like, well, wait a minute, why am I not investing in real estate? And you started putting some money into real estate and you're like, wow, this is, this is where it's at. Yeah. And then you had an overabundance of leads and you started divvying those out to other people and you created a business around that as well. Talk to me about that journey a bit. Yeah, sure. So, well, my, my background in the digital marketing is more in like the bigger stuff, like national, international, bigger companies, like really competitive things. And then I bought a, I bought my first deal off of a wholesaler. I found him on Craigslist. I bought him. I'm like, okay, this guy, I go to the closing table. I'm like, wow, you just made that much money. <laughs> and then I bought my second deal. Guy made like 15 grand off me. So what I did is I'm like, I can market. I know how to do this. So I stuck up a carrot website. It was like nothing crazy. I just wanted to test it out. And I started getting leads. Um, and I started getting a lot of leads actually. And uh, I only invest in one zip code. I invest where I live. So like it's one mile square radius. And I, I market to the whole city. So I get a whole bunch of extra leads that I, I don't want to drive to. I'm too busy to go to them. So I partnered up. I found out who the good wholesalers are in Pittsburgh. And I partnered up with them. I'm like, hey, if I send you all these leads, you want to run them. I'm not going to charge anything. We just split the deal. 
So that works really well. Um, it, it took a couple guys to, to go through them to find out who the good wholesalers are and stuff. Like, cause it's, you gotta be trustworthy, you know what I mean? Like, or else they're just going to forget where they came from. But yeah. So, I mean, I, I got into that and I just started marketing myself and did really well, send all the overflow to the other guys. And it's kind of a win-win. I love it. I love it. And um, you know, you, you mentioned in their carrot website, could you uh, explain what you mean by that to listeners who don't understand that? Yeah, sure. You know what? Um, my local website in Pittsburgh is 412houses.com. You guys can check it out. That's a carrot website. What they are, they're just a platform for real estate investors. Uh, they charge like 60 bucks. You just go on there and set up a website and it's, it's kind of done for you rather than having to hire a designer and all that kind of stuff and spending a month. You can have a website up in 20 minutes. Got it. And it, and it just delivers the result. It's not, it's not sexy. It's not all these different things, but it just, it delivers leads, right? Am I understanding that correctly? If you have the traffic. So, so carrot websites are good, um, but you have to get people to them and they're not the prettiest website, but they convert. Cause everyone's like, well, you know what? I don't really like how they work. I'm like, dude, look at my site. My site's it's not pretty at all. I didn't even change the pictures or anything, <laughs> but I get like four or five leads a day. Wow. So it's like, just because the messaging, if you, if you think about who your se- who your target audience is, they're looking for someone credible, local mm-hmm. that's not going to rip them off. So they're not looking for that big, fancy looking bank type website. They're looking for the local guy that's going to come in and help them get rid of their problem. You know, Brian, do you have any experience working with folks who are raising capital for real estate and, and SEO and marketing in terms of raising capital? Yeah. I, on the digital side, I, I have a couple of buddies that raise capital. I, we've never done it on the marketing side. I'd like to actually help them raise it though. Hey guys, just a quick word from our sponsor and we'll be right back to the show. This episode of Elevate is brought to you by CF Capital, and you know how much I love real estate and how it can be a vehicle towards creating any outcome that you want in your life, which is really why we created CF Capital, a real estate investment firm that focuses on acquiring and operating multifamily assets that provide stable cash flow, capital appreciation, and a margin of safety for our investors, for our partners, and for the people that we serve. Our team leverages its expertise in acquisitions and management to provide investors like you with superior risk-adjusted returns while placing a premium on preserving capital. Our mission is to provide property investment and asset management solutions to help investors maximize their returns by investing in high-value multifamily communities. Our philosophy is that we can elevate communities together through this process. And I want to invite you to go check out cfcapllc.com because we have a free ebook That's called the bottom line, the 10 ways to increase cash flow in an apartment complex. And I want to tell you that this is a value packed ebook. So I want to want to invite you to go check that out right now at cfcapllc.com. I think you're going to get a ton of value just from reading this, whether you apply it to your own business or whether you educate yourself further on what it would look like if you invested with CF Capital. So go check that out at cfcapllc.com. Again, that's cfcapllc.com and enjoy the rest of the show. I'm just curious what your opinion is. You know, obviously folks who are investing in syndications or funds, obviously for the most part, they're accredited, right? It's individuals who either have a million dollars net worth or they've made $200,000 plus over the past two years. And so obviously you have a certain type of demographic in that ballpark, but think about, you know, the folks who are generating leads or they're growing their investor community as their investor database. Obviously a lot of that comes through organics and, and really just through, you know, individual relationships and continuing to grow your, your network and your database. But tell me, what is your opinion on funnels and relating towards growing an investor database? Is there anything that you would say to that? Or is there any, you may not have any comments on that, but I'm just curious. You know what? Yeah, no, I can't actually talk on that. So once I think about it, I just uh, tested out probably six months ago, uh, creating a buyer's list. Just okay. I wanted to see like what it would cost. So we w- we put a website on, hey, we have a uh, sign up for our list to get $100,000 properties for investors. And uh, we ask them and we put them through the same funnel. We ask questions. Okay, you give us your email, all that kind of stuff. But then in the funnel, it's like, okay, are you looking for a place to live? Or are you looking for a place to invest? What do you? How much are you looking to spend? Do you have capital that you want to... Uh, invest, like let other people borrow. And we put them through that funnel and we put them in three batches pretty much. One people are just looking to buy homes, like to live in just because the market's crazy. The other guys are looking to like flip, buy and hold stuff like that. And some of the guys, yeah, they click the box. They're like, yeah, I got like 250,000. And then like, I never reached out to them because I don't need capital, but um, it, it would be great. Like if you wanted to do stuff like that. I'm just always curious because, you know, I think the central theme to success in that side of the business, whether you're raising capital and doing larger deals, syndications, funds, or, or anything in that ballpark, I think it all comes down to trust, right? It comes down to personal relationships and it has, it comes down to, you know, 
do we, how do we feel about each other? Right. As individuals. Right. And so there's, it's like this dichotomy because there's so much capital that needs a home and that needs to be in real estate and in, in this beautiful business that you and I love. And, and it's almost like, how do you bridge that gap? Is it through funnels? Is it through scaling some other platform? Maybe it's through personal branding, right? Is there anything yeah. that you would say to that, Brian? So you're saying from the point of view of the, of the person that is trying to lend money or the point of the view of the person that needs the funds? Yeah. Somebody who's looking to, somebody who's looking to raise capital for larger deals, who has expertise okay. in doing bigger deals, and they want to reach more people who have equity, but don't have the expertise in real estate or the time to go out there and find deals and develop deal flow and, and you know, fix the property, implement the business plan and so forth. So right. bridging that gap. Yeah. You know what? That, that, could, that would be interesting too. So yeah, it would be a lot on personal brand. Um, I could see it being on outreach, maybe on LinkedIn. Um, you can do a lot of kind of stuff like that too, because you can target people, but yeah, it's going to be so much on trust too. So it, it would kind of be, um, like, like if you have a big portfolio, you're an investor making ads, you're making, uh, like say videos, Hey, this is a before, this is an after, here's what we did. Here's where we failed. Here's how much we made and consistently doing that. It's going to create a brand, but you're going to be credible. It's like, okay, I got a couple hundred thousand dollars or a million or whatever it is. This guy's doing it over here. I've been watching him for the last year. He's consistently picking up properties. They, they go from ugly to beautiful. It would, they, they may reach out or you reach out to them, but at least they know who you are and know you're not some scammer. Talk to me about the elements of a world-class personal brand, because it, it seems to be continually more and more important. And, and I know you've written some articles on Forbes and even Huffington Post, which I thought were awesome articles, but talk to me a little bit about your perspective on personal branding and why that's so important. Yeah. Personal branding is huge just because um, we're, we're not selling products. Like we're, like we're trying to give people a, a solution for whatever their issue is. So say you're trying to get leads. Okay. That's, that's your problem. Your problem is you have money or you're in a contract or stuff like that and you don't have it. So on the personal branding side, there's so many different digital marketing companies out there. There's so many uh, We Buy Houses guys. There's all kinds of different people. That allows you to set yourself apart, talk about your core values and what you can do for people, what you believe. So then whenever they reach out to you, they kind of already have a connection with you versus uh, just hitting them with a cold ad based on, hey, you know what? We can lend you money or mm. whatever. It's like, no, no, that's Brian. You know what I mean? Or, right. or Tyler, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, so they, they kind of know. So that's super important just because it, it builds that connection and audience for you. Yeah. And that's one of the things that I love so much about the podcast is that I can develop and strengthen relationships with so many people at one time and people can kind of understand what my model of the world is and they can either resonate with me or they can't. And it's not like every single person in the world has to resonate with me, but the right people will. And so right. that creates new opportunities. But what are some other elements of creating a personal brand beyond, you know, the example of a podcast or, or maybe if it's even obviously social media, maybe it's personal websites, but what are some other elements of creating a phenomenal personal brand. Yeah. So you have all kinds of different ways. So, so there's certain people that like to talk. So like you can do podcasts, audio, some people don't want to be in front of camera uh, or some people do like being in front of camera. So you can do video, uh, you have blogs, you have um, all the social media channels. Uh, so there's, there's different ways that you, you can be on TV. You can be on the radio. It, it kind of, I think it goes to what you're like, like, like me, I like talking to people. So there's certain channels and certain outlets that would really work well for me and I'm comfortable doing. Uh, if you don't like being, if you don't like talking to people, you don't like doing that kind of stuff, you can probably, but you can write, write killer blogs, like give people info that way. That's going to build credibility for you. So take your strengths and look and say, okay, target audience I'm trying to get in front of. Here's what I like to do. And then figure out like what skill set you have that's going to give those do the, do it the best for you, you know? Yeah. And one of the reasons why I was always fascinated with marketing, digital marketing, and just branding and psychology is truly because of the psychology aspects and the psychological aspects of human behavior, consumer behavior, and all these different things. I still find it to be ultra fascinating. And to me, it's really important to be successful in real estate. You have to understand behavior, whether right. you're investing in retail, real estate office, real estate, multifamily, you have to know, all right, well, how do the traffic patterns and impact me? How does migration impact me? What are the decision-making mechanics behind all of those different factors and so on and so forth? I mean, there, I could go on and on about that, but then I think about, you know, the psychology of personal branding, familiarity. One of the things that I've heard, and I I'd love to hear you clarify this if you're aware of this, but from what I understand is that people need to be exposed to you or your message seven times before they're ready to buy. And maybe that's not the case for, you know, buying a home or, you know, a distressed uh, situation, but overall, 
is that something that you understand to be the, the, uh, the correct assumption as well? Seven times before there's a familiarity enough to where someone trusts you to, to do business together? Yeah, maybe even more. Um, yeah, you definitely have to be in front of people. It's all in a follow up game. Like you figure you can go for that uppercut and a hook to just go for the knockout punch up front. But you figure all those people that come to your website or do whatever, you're only getting a very small percentage of them. The people that are looking for now, depending on like in almost any industry, like people might be looking for insurance. They come to your website. Who's going to a stranger's website and signing up? I mean, some people will maybe like one or two percent, but then the other 98 percent. You stay in front of them, start giving them tips. Hey, here's what you do. Here's some tips. Here's how to protect yourself. Then you're building that, you're building your personal brand there, but you're also building credibility and giving them value and tips there. So, and that's how you stay in front of them too. So you keep getting in front of them, giving different things. They're like, oh yeah, I know that guy. He seems, he seems legit, you know, or even if it's a product, you just stay in front of them, you know, because people are ready when they're ready. Okay. So one of the biggest, um, I guess, words of the past several years that's become a part of the the common lexicon is algorithms, right? Everyone yeah. knows the word algorithms, but I don't know if it, everyone understands really what's happening and, and how powerful algorithms are. So, I mean, how have you seen algorithms evolve, whether it's on Google, whether it's on Facebook, or maybe it's across the entire internet? I mean, how are algorithms evolving and how are you, how are you changing as a marketer yourself to be able to, you know, not only be more effective and impactful during this evolution, but beyond? Yeah. You know, algorithms are creepy. So, <laughs> so, so I've watched, I'm 42. Yeah, I'm 40. No, I'm 41. So I, so I've evolved there. Like when I graduated high school, when I was 18, Google was just coming out. So I, I got to experience all the internet coming through. So back in the day, Google and everything, they, it wasn't very smart, like the algorithms and everything. But now, so an example of an algorithm on Facebook, they, the Facebook pixel is on pretty much every website out there. So number one, they can watch your behavior, say, okay, you just went on this site. You're looking for a pair of shoes. You went on this one looking for a pair of shoes. Now we know you're looking for shoes. So we're going to show you shoes ads. Or if you're looking to sell your house, you're on Zillow, different websites like that. Number one, everyone's like, oh yeah, Facebook's listening to you, which maybe they are. I don't know. But that more than more likely is they're watching your browsing behavior and then showing you ads based on what you were just looking at. So, so they're really smart. And then they're um, also taking a behavior too. Like say you add something to cart and you don't purchase, they now put you in a different segment on a list and show you, de- they deliver you different things. That's how they can be so relevant showing ads to you. That makes sense. It's so interesting because, you know, you you said, all right, well, is Facebook listening? The other question is, is Alexa listening to me? You know, is all of these other Siri listening to, you know, my conversations, because then are we starting to see the algorithm is starting to show us different products or, you know, different uh, pages, perhaps, you know, based on those conversations. I just think it's really interesting. And it's not like, oh, we're the victim of these circumstances. It's just understanding. And then how are we going to apply our own business strategy as a result of this, you know, one of the other things I I feel like is that it's like based on the accounts that you follow and engage with on social media, you're going to get that same type of content, or perhaps there's even more manipulated algorithms based on some other, who who knows other desires based on other larger companies that are providing, uh, you know, cash flow for these uh, social media companies or other digital companies. But to me, it's really, really interesting. Is there any, anything that you are seeing on the horizon as it continues to evolve? Yeah. It's just getting smarter and smarter. So even like what you, uh, what you engage with and then what you even like on Facebook, like different interests, things like that, they you're, you're being targeted. You figure Facebook, like we're the product, you know, it works really well for uh, marketers. The consumer is the product. And, but the thing is too, that they're, since their algorithms getting so smart, they're able to deliver things you want. So it's not like, Oh yeah, we're trying to trick you. It's like, you're looking for shoes. Hey, here are the one here. <laughs> we're just going to stick them in your feed until you buy one because we know you want them anyways. So sometimes like if I'm shopping for something, I'll just go open four websites in that niche and I'll just wait for the ads, you know, cause then you're going to get hit with promos and everything too. Yeah. You know? I love it, man. No, it's a, it's a good way to look at it as a consumer. Obviously there there's definitely good as a business owner, as an investor, you can use this to your advantage as well. And you can serve someone, right? It's not just right. about taking advantage. It's de- it's not about taking advantage of anyone. It's about getting in the right business relationship and creating a value for both parties, right? And, and getting, it's almost like creating the awareness where both parties understand that, well, wait a minute, maybe there is a mutual benefit here. And now we can create a transaction. Now we can, you know, do a deal together or whatever. So I think it's really interesting, man. But yeah. you know what, your, your story is fascinating to me. And I, I feel like, um, you know, it's really interesting 
interesting to understand sort of where you went and in, in, in gaining that expertise in digital marketing, gaining that expertise in SEO, then starting as a real estate investor, entrepreneur, or business owner. Talk to me, what are some other lessons that you've learned along the way? I'm sure you've had some bumps and bruises and you've, you've, you've stubbed your toe like I have, like many of the listeners have, but tell me about some other lessons that you've learned along the way. Yeah. So, I, so I've learned, oh man, that's a really good question. So I got punched in the face a lot. Um, one of the main lessons I learned, well, a couple of different things. Like if you're thinking, I see a lot of people get held up on this. Like if you're thinking about doing something, you want to do it, just do it. Like start doing it and then figure out how to do it while you're doing it. Versus a lot of guys are like, say doing digital marketing. Oh yeah, I got to go take all these courses and do this. Set some Facebook ads up and lose your money. You know, like figure it out. Like um, I'm just messing around with some right now. You ever hear of NFTs? Like yeah. the new crypto mm-hmm. thing? I don't have a clue how it works. So, <laughs> so I just hopped on OpenSea and I just started buying a couple just because I want to see the process and see how it works. So then eventually I'm going to understand it because whatever, I, I think whatever is coming from that will change the world, you know, but what, what gifts right now aren't, you know, <laughs> that resonates with me a lot. And, and I'm actually doing the same with cryptocurrency. Like I, I'm learning based on just putting a little bit of money at risk and learning and understanding how does this market fluctuate? What's the volatility all about? You know, how, what's a consumer behavior? I mean, not necessarily consumer behavior, but what's a behavior of the other folks that are investing in this asset class and understanding what that all looks like. But I also think it's relevant to real estate. There's a lot of people who learn, 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 learn in the next five, 10 years. It's like, you've learned everything. You've read every book, but my goodness, you got to put your money at risk at some point. You got to get out there Uh, and truly learn by experience. You know what I'm saying? So many people are like, like I'm talking to guys like, Hey, I want to get into real estate. I'm like, go buy a property. Like, <laughs> like right. start looking like, like it's not that easy. Like still do your due diligence, stuff like that, but, but actually do it. I think people are just scared because until you take that first step, like until you buy that first property, it's scary. Yeah. After you get the first one, you look back and you're like, that's totally different. That's a totally different experience than I thought it was. I, I always tell people just jump in, like, don't, don't be a doofus and uh, lose your cash. Um, which actually, that's another thing. Uh, one book, Richest Man in Babylon. Have you ever read that? I have. It's a great book. Okay. So I, I look at that too. That's one thing I learned. The five laws of gold. Pretty much like don't invest with uh, people you, that don't understand the trade and save your money, save 10%. Uh, if anyone gets a chance, read that. But um, I use pretty much those five laws of gold in there as a decision make on what, like when I invest, like um, going a little sideways on this one, but no, like, this I think- great. Yeah, I think one of them, one of them is like, don't invest with people that don't have experience or don't invest in things that you don't have experience, save your money, make your money work for you, like invest it uh, in different things like that. So I look at everything, like my buddy wanted me to get involved in uh, opening a coffee shop. I'm like, well, you don't have experience in that. And I don't have experience in that. So that's, that's an X, you know, but if you're, if, especially in real estate, if you're looking to lend money to someone, you know how to make the money. If you can find the investor that has the experience, not the guy that wants to go out that's your brother-in-law and says, hey, I want to get into real estate, lend me some money. But the guy that's flipping homes, like that makes sense to get involved. Like that, that has a high likelihood of succeeding versus uh, finding the guy that's just, that does not have the experience yet. I love that philosophy. And, and how do you balance that philosophy of don't invest in things that you don't know or understand with you got to take action at some point, you've got to learn through experience. I mean, how do you balance that? I'm just curious. Yeah. So I balance it. I'll, I, I look at it like I'm going to the casino. If I want to get it, like say the NFTs are crypto, I'll stick like uh, 500 bucks on it in an NFT just to see I'm putting it on red or black. I know I'm, I'm just guessing I'm losing my money. Um, versus if I'm looking at it as an investment, I'm going in with real money to do stuff. So that's kind of how I balance it. And then the more I learn, like say, say I look at these NFTs or something and eventually I figure it out. Okay. Once you figure out how it works, then you can invest more because now you got the experience versus, Versus reading someone's hype and sticking twenty thousand or fifty thousand dollars in something on some stupid gif, and then you just like lose your shirt because you got ripped off, you know? Yes, I do, Brian. Yeah. This is awesome, man. I want to transition into our rare air questionnaire. It's a rapid fire section of the podcast. It's all about being uncommon, man. It's about pushing. It's about understanding algorithms. It's about understanding all of these amazing tools at our disposal so that we can get in the right relationships to do business with more people, serve more people and create this amazing business together. So that's what this is all about. I want to ask you a few questions. Uh, You just mentioned The Richest Man in Babylon as a book that you've really enjoyed and and it's meant a lot for you. It's helped you make a lot of decisions. But if you had to point to two or three of the most impactful books that you've read over the past few years, otherwise, what would you say and why? Yeah, I'd say Think and Grow Rich, like we talked about earlier, the number one book, because it just shows you, hey, if you can think something, like if you can think it and believe it, then you can achieve it. So it's like, if you could think you can make a million dollars, 
put that thought in your head. You don't know how you're going to do it yet. Like you don't have to figure out how you're going to do it. Visualize what you want to do first. And then you can work back and kind of putting positive vibes out in the ether. And, and somehow the universe just works that way. I, I don't know quite know how, but it does. It just doesn't happen quick. Uh, Richest Man in Babylon is the other one. That one, I just looked at mainly that one page, Five Laws of Gold. It was awesome. Um, and then, oh boy, another good book. Um, Gary Vaynerchuk's Jab, Jab. That's a good book. Uh, just yeah. showing you like on the marketing side of things, uh, how to do it. Don't just go for the uppercut, things like that. Like you got to build the funnel. You got to drop, you got to um, give people information and build those relationships with them on the marketing side. Yeah. Add value, continue to add value and yeah. uh, give yourself the opportunity to deliver more value through a true relationship, through a true business relationship. I love that, man. Uh, we'll put links in the show notes as to where the listeners can find those books. And aside from our discussion today thus far, what's the biggest way that you elevate your life on a daily basis, Brian? On my life, I like to, um, I like to wake up early, think, think about like what I want today and keep everything structured and, and constantly Okay, you have two different things that you're dealing with. You're dealing with a couple of different things. You got family, you got income, then you got other people too. So I, I constantly strive. I always want to be the best. I want to. I want to overly. I want to do a good job at everything I do in business. Then, but then you have to find that balance with family. So we do a lot of camping. Like I'll take off weekends. We bought a camper, which forces to get out of to get away from the tech. Like you just go away, turn your phone off, spend time there. And then uh, something really important, I think though, is there's a lot of people out there too that don't have it as good as I do. So you always just carve off money or time, whatever you have more of and try to help other people um, just because like everyone's hat been down. So give them a shot, you know, like help them out from where you're benefiting, you know? So being a dad of three boys under 10, I mean, how do you balance that? Obviously you mentioned how you're, you know, you're working hard every single day, you've got this fire in your gut and all this stuff, but how do you balance, you know, being a dad and being an entrepreneur and investor? Yeah. So pretty much I just wake up real early. <laughs> like, I, like I'll wake up, I'll work from like usually four in the morning till five in the afternoon. So it's like 13 hours and then come five o'clock, I'm pretty much done work and like spend time because the kids are home, you're having dinner, spend some family time. And then same on the weekends. I try to pull back on the weekends. Um, I wasn't able to do that before though, but I'm, I'm to a point now that I can pull back on the weekends, but it, it's super important, which you'll see with, with the kids coming. Um, but like they grow so fast. So it's like, they're going to go two and then they're going to be nine. I know it's, it's like, okay, did that, did that conference call at night really matter for missing whatever it was? Right. You know? Right. No, that's a great reminder. What's the biggest way that you elevate others around you? You mentioned about giving back, whether it's time or treasure. I mean, what's the biggest way that you elevate others around you? Uh, a couple ways. So, so there's different kinds of people. I, I like to really help other people. Like, like say in real estate, I talk to a lot of guys like, Hey, how do you do it? I'm like, dude, come on. I'll show, I'll literally show you every single thing I do. Like, let me show you how. So that's one way. Um, that's probably the best way I think is trying to help other people get over their hurdles. Like just because a lot of people, it's like, dude, just do it. Like, so I think, I think other people, if they can hear from someone else, Hey, you're overthinking this, just go out and take that first step. You don't have to do the whole thing. Take the first step. That really helps other people too. Cause it helped, it helped me back in the day too. Like if someone's like, Hey, hey you don't have to do all this, just do this first part, you know? Yeah. Um, so I'd, I'd say that's a big one. Just if you can try helping other people get ahead. Man, Brian, I just want to acknowledge you because um, you're sharing your expertise. You're giving the keys, right? You're giving the tools really to, to make it happen in, in digital marketing and SEO and creating leads and creating these opportunities to create abundance through real estate and otherwise, man, I just want to acknowledge you for your commitment to serving other people. I want to acknowledge you for your commitment to being a continual growing investor and entrepreneur yourself. You're an amazing individual, Brian. I appreciate you sharing so much of your wisdom today. Is there any parting thoughts or words of wisdom that you'd like to share with Elevate Nation? I'd pretty much just tell them one thing is, hey, keep failing and then just tell yourself, just try one more time. Every time you fail, just try again once. You only have to try one time, not a whole bunch. And just keep going through the cycle because it will hit. Man, that's exact. I love that. Try one more time. I, I Just always <laughs> one more time. My yeah. friend, Brian, thank you so much for being on the show. The listeners can find you at motivated leads.com. Where else can the listeners find you? Yeah, you can just on LinkedIn. Just look me up on there. Brian Driscoll, Brian with a Y. Um, yeah, and just go to the website. Awesome. And we will put links in the show notes as to where you can find Brian. Brian, thank you so much for being on the show. Hey, thanks, man. Thanks for having me. Elevate Nation. I want to encourage you to re-listen to this episode because there is a lot of marketing wisdom in this episode and there's a lot that you can apply. There's a lot that you can do for your business to take it to the next level 
but you can also understand sort of what's happening. You can also understand how you can potentially be manipulated as a consumer by algorithms, by digital marketing and so forth. So be an informed consumer, but also be an informed investor and informed entrepreneur. I want to encourage you to re-listen to the show. I want to also encourage you to identify what's your number one, two, and three top takeaways from this episode. What are you doing to apply those immediately? Also share this with a friend and have a discussion with someone else, whether it's your business partner, maybe it's an investor, maybe this is someone else that you care about. Maybe this is someone else that you're looking to do business with. Have a discussion around this episode and see what additional distinctions you bring as a result of that discussion, because you learn more when you discuss and when you have, you know, sort of round tables, whether it's one-to-one or maybe it's multiple people. I want to encourage you to share this with a friend, share this with your network. Until next time, Elevate Nation, I want to encourage you to take massive action because at the end of the day, knowledge is not power, but only potential power. The real power is in taking action. Till next time, Elevate Nation, thank you so much for tuning in and we will see you next time. Thank you for listening to Elevate. If you enjoy this episode, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, and pay it forward by sharing with a friend. Most importantly, take this opportunity to elevate your results by taking immediate action on what you learned. For more, visit elevatepod.com.